the diner is lit like purposely very very bright just to you know when something is really dark should be dark when it's bright it's really exaggerated it's really too it's like I mean I had a hard time it's like oh this is gonna be too flat this is too much this is too much and then we were timing the movie it was like oh this will make it even brighter you know? it's like which is because the timer of course they always want to make everything nice and even so it matches and which is actually made it even brighter so it's like because that's what happens you know if you at night walk around you look at something it's just you have to squint your eyes you know? you delighting of the strangers like lost children the whole thing happened basically from we it was a collaboration of Alex talking to Patrick Todopoulos who drew all the sets and then I stepped in and we were while Patrick was drawing we were just trying to find the best look for that and we started painting them from below and that gave us the idea to put the lights underneath the set build them inside the set so the strangers had a well it from the bottom it's obviously dramatic yeah not very flattering everything is extremely stylish so my approach to the whole thing was just let's light it in the most it might sound funny but it's absolutely true let's light it like in the most like naturalistic way so what i've used on the streets we built practical lights which of course shapes of it is very stylized and that kind of fits the whole look of the movie but sources were actually sodium vapor lights which you use right now on every streets so they have this kind of yellowish yellowish green look so all of a sudden you, s you have something which like if you take a camera still camera shoot it on the street it'll look exactly like like our like our uh, like our streets in this very extremely stylized movie like this is a perfect scene the scene when uh, Walensky is placed I mean it was truly lit with one practical and actually there's one frame when you can see this practical burning because we put such a strong bulb in it and you put this practical you establish the white shot and all you do is just try to when you get closer you just bring the source which basically complements a little bit but very simply when it, when Rufus comes under the street light he's completely top lit when he goes too far you don't see him but that's what would happen if you were you know or if you were in reality, you know, that's what, that's how it's lit, you know. Except we're so used to reality being movie reality when everyone lights everybody with muslins and beautiful soft bounce light. You know. So on TV, when everything is lit flat, so all of a sudden we th we think that that's reality. That's not. That's TV. That's bad aesthetic. Our biggest problem on this film was, I don't want to say a wrong number, but we had like about 52 sets or 55 sets to shoot in in 80 days, less than 80 days just logistic to be able to build them, pre-light them, shoot them, <laughs> strike them. It's it's something which is like just really, really, really difficult to do. No, of course we wanted to distinguish Underworld, so f we changed this yellow-green palette into the blue-green palette, which I felt might be very, might be very interesting. But again, the blue-green palette is also taken from reality because it's the color of you're lighting in the supermarket. If you take the camera, go to the supermarket, take a picture. The w people won't be lit from below, but they'll just look exactly blue-green like, like strangers. So it doesn't come from some like majorly invented philosophy. It's just taking what's in our real life and just putting it into this very stylized piece. I mean, I have very... It's frustrating because I'm like, you know, I'm a, I still have like a very simple way of thinking. If I see something, I can like it or not. And a lot of times when you do effects, you just don't see that thing, you know. The great thing about working with Alex is that Alex is going to be there later on, and his aesthetics are just great, so he's going to make it work, you know, he's going to really make it work. So it's kind of a trust, it's frustration, but it's a trust, you know. That's what it ends up being, you know. What I try to do, I try to light everything. <laughs> I try to not compromise my lighting for effects, and because a lot of times when you do effects, I mean, it's getting much better, technology is much better, but still, like three, four years ago, certain effects, you had to, a lot of people were just compromising lighting to make sure that the effect will work. So, for all of a the perfect effects, but the whole scene as a whole thing looked pretty artificial and, and thick. So, but thank God to technology right now, we can just go and light it the way we want it, and, and the green screen, you can always pull the mat, and you know, all those technical things somehow happen. I try to make a match me, you know, instead of, me matching them and that's that's what you know
I think that if you are, you know, if you're fascinated by art, you know, by something beautiful or intriguing, interesting, you see everything and then it just melts into like one, one part and then it becomes your own, you know, interpretation of it. So I just, I just really am against like using, the, you know, of course you can, you can, in every movie you can find shots which are quotes or references or taken from other movies because there's been all the great movies have been made that have been made already you know Orson Welles was a huge influence Hitchcock was an influence I mean all the greatest I mean they're all cliches because everybody knows that Kubrick, Kubrick is brilliant and Orson Welles is brilliant and Hitchcock is brilliant and German expressionist was brilliant in fact those people were sometimes commercially successful and sometimes commercially not successful you know we can't just Make a uh, remake archive movies, you know, you have to make something which has some kind of a reverence to what's happening right now. Okay, the Shell Beach scene. The idea was that we, the whole film takes place in this world when there's no daylight. So the whole film is about finding an ocean and finding a daylight. So finally, the door opens and it's this blinding light. And so our intention was just to build this pier in the most beautiful place in the world and shoot this beautiful, you know, low light, fantastic sound sequence. The only way to do it is because of this kind of film, we could sch schedule only one day to shoot the exterior. We had no cover sense, nothing, because there was, this is it. And we arrive and in the morning there's no sun, you know, it's foggy, so we wait, we don't know what to do. And then by the time sun clears, the uh, light is very toppy and bright. So, so it was actually, yeah, it was pretty hard. So what we decided to do, we did wide shot. We basically kept them really kind of dark and moody. And then close-ups, I lit, pretending the light is coming. It's kind of warm, sunsetish light, lower light. And the real actual sunset shot, the second unit shot, was doubles. And then that wasn't good enough for Alex, so he put clouds, little orange clouds, CGI, which he loves. He's been always putting clouds in his early commercials, and he just loves to put his own clouds. That's like his thing, you know. When he wants to have a cloud, he'll have it, even if it's not there. <laughs>